hi guys welcome back to my channel i'm juliana and in today's video we are going to finish finally the 12 books for 12 months of 2022 and the book that i was missing was my june book and that is Budenbrooks by thomas mann so i have to say that although this reading got me like more than half a year to read it doesn't mean that i wasn't enjoying it was more because i had laziness to read i had other books that in the middle got in front of it well to be truthful it was yes because i was more down and I wasn't with so much enthusiasm to read and so I had to turn the year to a new year to finally finishing it finish it and so I'm going to talk a little bit about the some curiosities about this book uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to talk about the plot of the book and then I'm, uh, I'm going to do my comments how was my reading experience, what I thought about the book and then at the end, I'm not sure yet but then at the end, perhaps I do um, spoilers part because there are some things in here that are really fun to talk about and but of course I will warn you when that part comes up if it comes up I'm going to see uh, along the review that I'm going to do I'm going to see if I'm if I'm feeling like to do the spoilers part so Budenbrooks was the first book written by Thomas Mann. He, it was his premiere, can we say? Shall we say that? Um, and he starts writing it when he was 21 years old. And it finally published when he was 26 years old between 25 and 26, but I think he was 26 when this book was published. So it took him four to five years to write this book. And you have, it's to be astonished how young Thomas Mann was when he wrote this wonderful book because it's so complex and it's so well written that is fascinating how this could be his first book and you have to see the length of the book as well so it was a hard work for him of course and Thomas Mann would, would eventually be awarded with the Nobel of Literature uh, in 1929 and some of the things that there were said at the, at the time was that Puttenbrooks was a turning point for them to to make Thomas Mann the winner of that year. So Budenbrook had a lot of weight in the decision making of the judges of the Nobel Prize. So it is astonishing again that the first ever written book by Thomas Mann, I, I mean I can say it was the first first book because maybe he would have drafts before, I mean, I suppose he, he did. But the first published book, shall we say, uh, and it's wonderful to see how this book, his first published book, has had so many weight in the decision making of the Nobel Prize judges. So, magnificent, right? And this book has a um, subtitle, so it's Budenbrook's 
the decline of a family. So the whole book is going to start in the um, in the heyday, heyday, I think that's how you say it, of the Budenbrooks, the family. And then after that, we are going to accompany the decline and the misfortunes that will happen to the, this family. And it's at the time it was when it was published, some members of the family of Thomas Mann were really bothered because they saw themselves in the characters of this book. And Thomas Mann would be sued by them because of that. Then it turned out in nothing, but that would happen. And in the city they, they lived in, it turned around a paper like with the name of the characters and so people would guess who was who so you know that turns out a bit awkward to the family and so that is why they were very angry at him because he portrayed members of the family in his book but you know this is an inspirational we can say maybe some autobiographical and we have in many characters um, parts of Thomas Mann himself but we have to be we have to admire the talent to portray and to describe and to characterize all of his characters and I understand if some of the members of his family turn out a bit sad and a bit angry, but at the same time, this is a work of art. The way that he describes the aristocracy all the time. Uh, and so throughout this book, we never know exactly in which city uh, we are we are, or the characters live in, but we know that they live in the north of, of Germany uh, and possibly in a city called Lubeck, that is the city where Thomas Mann grew up in and where his family lives or lived, I don't know if they live there anymore. The family of Thomas Mann were rich merchants, as we also see here in Budenbrooks. We accompany Budenbrooks as a merchant family with a big company and a very successful company. So Thomas Mann inspired himself in his own family, as is was already stated. And well, we are a company here some say it's four generations, but I think the first generation is not so much talked about because we accompany here mainly three generations from 1835 to 1877. We accompany Joanne II and his wife Antoinette then we accompany the second generation, Joanne III and his wife Elizabeth. And then we accompany the third generation, that's the generation we will be most accompanying in Budenbrooks. And in that generation, we will accompany Tom, the firstborn. We accompany, will accompany Anthony, most known as Tony. Christian and Clara. Something that is in many time many times talked about in this book is that the family Budenbrook has um, a notebook, like a big book, where they annotate big events that happen in the family to each member. So a wedding, a baptism, a death, like 
big events and they date the year, the day, the month. So it's like a chronology of events of the family. And it, it is said that the family of Thomas Mann had the same thing. So we have here one more inspiration where Thomas Mann borrowed to his book. And so the first chapter of Budenbrooks starts with a big party. It's like a commemoration of the buying of a big house for the family, I think. If I'm not mistaken, they give names to the houses and I think that this one is the Mengstrab. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but uh, I'm sorry for that. I don't speak German, so I have difficulties pronouncing in pronunciation. Um, and it is described, it's very descriptive, this, the, the first chapters of this book. So it will describe the food, it will describe the trays, how they are beautiful and polished. Um, it will describe the clothes, the, the decoration and which, who was in the party, every single member that was present in that party. And I have to say that when I first started reading this book, I was almost about to give, in, give, it, up, give it up or giving up reading because I wasn't like feeling it. <laughs> It was so a bit confusing, first of all, and second of all, it was so boring because it was describing um, details of the party and not so much what was really happening. And uh, at first I didn't have the knowledge of why he was doing that. And then later on we find out that it, it will be like a comparison because many other parties will happen or many other, other dinners and we'll see as the book progresses, uh, as our reading progresses, that the parties will be smaller, the trays will be not so chic, uh, and we'll become smaller and smaller till we have dinner, someone dining alone, you know? So we see the progression of the decline. And I think the name for that is light motif. Um, it's a terminology that I think is used in music that is like um, a rhythm dish. Um, how can I explain it? It repeats itself, so it's like repetitions that we, well, for example, when some scene happens and that is vital to the piece, let, let, shall, shall we say, um, the same music plays so that it be ingrained in our memory that that scene will be vital because of the music, something like that. And so leitmotif is something that Thomas Mann uh, uses in Budenbrooks. And as I explained, for example, about the parties and the dinners that will repeat each other, with, will repeat itself throughout the book and we can have the comparison of what was happening at the beginning and what is happening at the moment. Uh, something that is also recurrent in Prudenbrooks is the book of the family, as I, as I was explaining. So in many periods of the book, we will see someone annotating something in the book. And so that is like a mark of their lives. And so after 
that party we um, began more we began f to follow the grandchildren of the founder if i'm not mistaken tom antony christian and clara uh, we began to accompany first of all antony or tony i'm going to call her tony because it's her nickname in a way and tony uh, is very like she wants to do good for the family she wants to do what what is right for the family because she gives many importance to the status of the family in society and how they are thriving um, and so she wants to be part of that and bring honor and pride to her parents and so there is a point right at the, uh, the first moment that we get to know her that she she will going to pass um the summer in the house of friends of her parents and there she will go to the beach because the house is near the beach so she is going on walks to unwind a bit and there she will meet the son of the the couple and he's studying to become a doctor but he said that the, that family is not so well accomplished shall we say as Budenbrooks as the Budenbrooks and so, and even if she, he becomes a doctor, is not, um, how can I explain it? It's not a profession that has so much prestige in comparison to the status of the Budenbrooks. But she falls in love and um, her parents are trying to get her to marry because I don't know exactly how old she is in this moment, but I suppose 17, 18 years old. Uh, and her parents want her to marry, but they, they want her to marry a merchant. So like themselves, you know. And Tony, although that, and although she, she wants to do good for the family and obey her parents, she falls in love and we see her uh, at the end of the summer being bombarded in her mind by this duality that she's in because she found perhaps the love of her life but at the same time she wants to obey her parents and make them proud and then we accompany tom the firstborn of the of the grandchildren and tom is very intelligent so he is the, um, he will be the heir of the company and we see him studying some books and um, we accompany um, flirtation, more than a flirtation, like um, more than a flirtation, like a love affair <laughs> with the florist of the city. We, it's funny because they both are aware of each other status. So Tom knows that he can't marry the florist. I don't remember her name and the florist knows that she can't marry Tom because she's extremely poor and doesn't have any prestige in society but she's okay with that and they end up the case that they have with each other in friendly way in a friendly way and it's very fun to very fun or very curious to read that part, like they 
come to a mutual understanding and Tom will marry um, a girl from a rich family, so as he is supposed to do. Christian is like the bon vivant of the family, he's like a libertine, he's, I think he, we, when he, we first um, become to, began to know about Christian, he's in a foreign country, in a Latin, Latin America country, Chile, I think it's Chile. Uh, and he's there working, supposedly, but we find out that what he wants is to go to the theater, to go to the um, clubs, um, to see people dancing and dancing himself. So everything cultural and fun and not so much hard work. But he is also um, hypochondriac because he's um, a victim of some diseases, rheumatism, and so his life will not end up well, I suppose, as he imagined. And then Clara is uh, the sister that is less talked about in this book we only have like a few chapters about her and it's really brief because well i'm not going to say anymore it's brief that's the only thing that i will say i don't want to give you any spoilers uh, at least right now uh, and so she is not so much talked about, we little find out about, well, we find out about her character as a person and um, she ends up marrying a priest, if I'm not mistaken, uh, but we little find out about her life after that, so we just read some letters that they exchange with their mother, um, but that's almost only it. And so along the, the reading, Tom will become the, char the in charge person of the company. So he will succeed to his father. Oh, because they are, his father was a consul and he will turn a consul as well. And more later in the story, he will become a senator as well. So at the same time that Tom is progressing in his career and in his prestige, the, the business of the company is in decline and we'll see many things that will happen uh, throughout the book happening. And sometimes it doesn't have to be directly with the company but about the life of Tony, because uh, about some partnerships that she will end up doing um, and the dowry that the, the woman has to give and those type of things. Uh, and also the, um, some businesses that Tom will end up doing that will not turn out in the best way and so it's a it's a communion of circumstances that will happen uh, along the years that we are accompanying this family that will turn um, like a rock uh, putting them down bit by bit so it's a continuation a continuum of events and misfortunes is not all just because because they did something wrong sometimes things happen and they ju just had bad luck we can say that tom will end up having a boy a little boy 
that he calls he's called Joanne as well, but they will call him more by Hanu. So he's known to be Hanu. He's like Anthony is Tony, Joanne is Anu. But Hanu is very debilitated. He's a baby that was born um, very sensitive and very sickly that will accompany him throughout his life. And there is a point in here, more to the end of the book, where we will accompany a whole day in the life of Hanu when he was like 15 in school and he had a best friend called Kai and how um, they are they have each other's back and that was one of my favorite chapters of the whole book but then after we find out something that Tur tur turns down the joy of that chapter. So it's like ups and downs with this family that we are going to accompany. Sometimes we, we apparently they are going well, but then some extravagancies, some um, tries to show the society that they are thriving when they are not, but they want to uh, exteriorize richness and that has a toll on the, on the um, financial um, part, right? So, some, some things are their fault and because they are weak in some ways and they, they made bad decisions. And other things are just because, well, they had misfortune, they had bad luck, they were born like with some conditions as well. So it's not all concerning decisions or misfortune. Sometimes it's conditions that they were born in, born with. So it's a combination of things. Um, and I have to say that I love this book. This was, I had already uh, read Dr. Faustus by Thomas Mann and I love that book as well. And something in Dr. Faustus is very in front of is music. And I have to say that in this book, we have chapters that Thomas Mann will talk about music because Hanu, and, Hanu uh, plays the piano and his mother plays the violin and she's very good at it and they do duets and there's a chapter here, one or more, now I'm not sure, where he will talk about music with so is almost poetic the way that he writes about it it's incredible i can't even explain it and i read this book in portuguese so even if i wanted to read to you some parts i don't know how well i would translate it to you so that's a shame but um, you have to read it it's really really incredible the way that thomas Mann writes and that was something that I, I already had noticed it, noticed it in uh, Dr. Faustus. The way that Thomas Mann writes is so um, well done, like you can see that the man has talent. He's not, he writes well, and sometimes that is difficult to find out. Um, and the way that he uh, constructs the paragraphs and I think the punctuation I, one thing that I am extremely strict about is punctuation my books and my uh, stories have to have punctuation and good in this in the right moments 
And I think Thomas Mann is eczemius uh, at punctuation. And I love reading his books and love reading his stories because I know that the phrase construction will be perfect. And yeah, <laughs> I know that may sound strange and not so much important, but for me it is. And he is wonderful at that. And I think the way that he writes and the way that he, he describes things and he, uh, because in here we have the thoughts of the characters and I love that to know uh, what they are thinking at certain points. I think it's so, it gives you an insight of the character that in other ways you don't have. So I love that. And it's a sad story in the end, I have to say. Well, the subtitle is The Decline of a Family, as it is. So you will not have a happy ending in here. Um, but although that, it's wonderful. And I really advise you to go and read it. So now I want to speak a bit about some spoilers um, about the story. So if you haven't read it yet, I will say goodbye to you now. I see you on the next one, hopefully. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed it till this point. And if, well, if you don't mind with spoilers, then let's continue. So, so Thomas or Tom, um, he's a character that he has um, moments in here, principally with Hanu, his son, where he brings Han with him to visit some, some people and he's trying to teach Hanu how to behave in society. Hanu will see his father like representing or better acting like a different person. So we have the polite, the politicized Thomas, Tom, and we have the real Tom at home. And Hanu will see how Tom emulates this aura of well, well talking and well mannered and refined words and refined gestures and everything is an act, right, for Anu. And it's really funny to see that uh, representation of the um, aristocracy and um, and the role that some people have to give to the exterior and Thomas and Tom represents that because Tom he's obsessed with his appearance so he will dress like exquisitely like the first hand materials and that will be that will have also a toll on the decline of the of the company but thomas wants to emulate what i was saying before so his dressing has to be impeccable and it's ironic how we find out about the ending and the death of tom and how he ends up in, uh, um, in a watering hole with mud under him and how he dirts his gloves, his white gloves and holy suit. So the way that Tom ends is all contrary to what he emulated to the exterior. And even when he is bring is brought home, and the the clothes 
that are disp disposable in the share are described that are all dirty with mud. So that is contrary to what Tom emulated all, all his life. So his ending is ironic. Something that is said about Thomas is that he is not um, so keen uh, about art and music as his wife and his son. And he thinks that is a bit ridiculous the feverish commotion with, with, with which um, Gerda, that is wife, and Hanu play music and are happy together in duets. And at the end of his life he has like an epiphany where he sees the importance and, um, and the added value of creativity but he discards that, those thoughts and because he doesn't want to seem ridiculous to other people because again he wants to protect his image uh, and we see a decadence in Thomas where he at the beginning of the book was very intellectual at some at that point and further and further in the story we get him getting away of that and be further on um, lost in his eccentricities and about Christian we see him also with an ironic ending because so he ends up marrying Aline I don't remember her name but I think it's Aline or Alain and he ends up in an hospice uh, enclosure there where his w wife right ends up giving him away and at what is apparent doesn't give any thought about him anymore after that so his life being that he was the um, libertine of the family and that he enjoyed so much the outdoors and going out and going to the theater going to the parties going to the club the men's club um, and he ends up enclosured to the end of his life. So that's uh, irony again in Thomas Mann book. And returning to Thomas, when he bought that, when he bought, no, when he built that ostensive house, so we could see remembering of the subtitle of the book, we could see that that wouldn't be a good thing. Um, why did he have to bought to, to build that big house? So it was one more thing where he invested so much money and just to the exteriors, just to show others that he was well in life, the, he was progressing in his career, that he was um, a big name and so that was one more thing that Thomas ends up um, admitting to himself though so there's many conversations and many uh, interior dialogues where Thomas will admit him to himself that this um, showing off it's not good it's n it will not come up with uh, it, we will not turn out, turn out in a good way there is a point where gerda is playing a duet with uh, lieutenant throta and thomas becomes because a rumor turns out to turns uh, around the city saying that Gerda and this lieutenant are having an affair 
and Thomas is gets affected by that, and this lieutenant uh, comes up to, a to his house many times to play together with Gerda, and in one of those times, he and Hanu are together, and Thomas like has a moment because. The relationship between Hanu and Thomas is not the best, right? Um, they have, they are so different, and Thomas wants so much that Hanu um, becomes the heir of the company and becomes his successor. That he wants the son to be strong and manly, and Hanu is the opposite of that. And so they all had throughout their lives a um, tortuous relationship where Hanu would obey his father through, well, because he had to and he, he didn't want trouble with his father and Thomas never understood plainly the, his son and the um, sensitivity of his son. Uh, and so there is one moment where something happens where Thomas like admits his doubt to Hanu and there's the only moment where they both are vulnerable where Thomas is vulnerable and has a um, heart to heart moment with his son there is also a point in the book where Hanu, well, where Thomas wants Hanu to, to write something in the book of the family, but Hanu, like, has, is written that he was born in the book, and Hanu just um, strikes a, a line um, throughout the book, like, closing the book in a way and that becomes like a premonition of what is to come and as I was saying before there is a chapter here where we accompany a day in the life of Hanu and we see the complicity between him and Kai uh, and then after that chapter we have the chapter of Tifu so it's funny how Thomas Mann encountered the way to enclose the ending of Hanu because Tifu, the, the, the chapter of Tifu is like explaining the disease and the symptoms that the disease has in a person but he never says that that is happening to someone he just explains the disease and is really uh, curious how we later find out that that was the disease that victimized Hanu and that is how he died uh, but there is a moment right at the end where the mother so Gerda, Tony and some of the uh, ladies uh, of the family, other Budenbrooks, are talking about the death of Hanu and how Hanu was visited by Kai and how Kai kissed his hands and was there right till the end. Uh, and so we have here this, uh, in a subtle way, so that is my, that is my conclusion, that Hanu was gay and Kai in a in a way was his lover his lover or his boyfriend he's maybe not assumed but implied and that comes up to the story of Thomas Mann himself so I don't know much about his life I just know things that I heard about, someone talking about, or something that, that I read like in the ears of the book. So information here and there dispersed. Um, 
but apparently Thomas Mann was a gay man and he not he never assumed that to the public but apparently he had assumed that to his family to his wife and to the, his children uh, and uh, that in Venice is a novella by him I think it's a novella and it talks about a gay man also so this topic I think is a recurrent topic in Thomas Mann books and so we can see a little about himself in his books uh, and I love the character of Hanu although he was sickly and um, not so much an action man um, I love I loved his enjoyment of art and music and there is a conversation between Hanu and Kai where they talk about the future of themselves so Kai is a storyteller he enjoys writing and he at, at the age of 15 has some stories written already and so Kai envisions a future where he becomes a writer and so Kai was talking to Hanu about Hanu's future and how he could become a musician a piano player and Hanu very discouraged is like I don't have the talent I improvise some things but that's it and it's really sad to see how a young man is so discouraged so soon you know and and convinced that he doesn't have the talent needed to become what he really wants because he never wanted to succeed his father he never wanted to become a merchant and become a head of the company of the Budenbrooks so he, he never wanted that life for him he loved the theater he loved playing piano he loved playing with his mother and that was the thing that um, brought joy to him so I really enjoyed Hanu I think Hanu was my favorite character mainly because of the chapter where we accompany his the day in his life um, and well if you have any other comment to do about the spoilery things about this book I would love to know them so if you want to make a comment down below please title your comment spoilers and leave spaces many spaces and then write your comment so that other people don't um, when they go to the comment section don't see right away what you have written so they have warning at the beginning that that is con a comment with spoilers in it and I really lo would love to hear and to read your own perspectives and your own uh, comments about uh, this book with spoilers if you have read it and if you haven't I really love to well if you haven't perhaps you are not here so yeah uh, I will leave you now I think this video is huge by now so again I talk and talk and talk and I talk very slowly and this always happens what can we do but I hope you have enjoyed it please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications leave a like it helps out the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel follow me on Instagram I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else and before you go I have links for Amazon uh, Spain and Amazon UK down below where you can acquire this book in English I also have general links 
to Amazon Spain and Amazon UK so you can buy anything you want dog food, books, chandeliers, anything at all you can go and click the link down below and with doing that I receive a small commission so it doesn't change anything of the value of your final the final value of your purchase uh, on clicking those links I receive a small commission and there is, there is a way for you to help me buy more books to bring to the channel because I spend my money in books so if you are a Portuguese viewer I have links to Wook and Bertrand so you can click those and yeah that's it so I see you on the next one bye